So post-processing all happens in the post-processing toolbox. And most commonly you see deformations and some sort of stress contours. Uh, what I want to focus on today is a free body diagram. It's a bit more advanced technique for, um, for post-processing your model. And what we're going to look at here is we're going to put a free body diagram right through this section here. Say we want to know how much shear is going through this thin section of this machined part. Maybe we need to beef it up and we want that information for the next design iteration. That's where a free body diagram comes in really useful. All right, so this analysis runs in about a minute on my machine. We have results. You can see all these options here on the post-processing toolbox light up. We can say deform. We can say contour. And there you go. There's your standard stuff. We're looking at translation. Um, if you want to change any of these options, you can change them here. Say we want to look at something like von Mises stress. There you go. But like I said, I'm interested in the free body diagram. So let's clear out some space here so we can actually read the options. Free body. I want to create a new free body. And I want to use my free body elements. I'm not putting a free body diagram at my constraints or at my loads or at a multi-point reaction or multi-point constraint, aka rigid element. I want to do a section cut right in the middle. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, free body diagrams can be complicated. And this is kind of my recipe for the simple starting point. You're going to do an interface load and you're going to turn off your nodal forces. So the only thing, the only vector we're going to display is a total force vector. It's going to sum forces on all of the nodes through our section cut and give us one vector to tell us what's going on. So come back to this. This is kind of your standard basic free body here. All right, so we have created the free body. Now we have to tell it where we want to create it. So let's line up our view here. Get a good head-on shot. This button here allows me to select my elements. And I'm just going to select kind of a random slice through the middle here. Kind of remember where this is. If you want to preview what you've selected, there's a highlighter. So now my nodes, I just want to pick all the nodes on one side of that section cut. I've got a little overlap here, but that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. It'll sort out, you know, nodes along that interface, along that element selection. And it's going to ask me if it wants to put my vector right at the center of those nodes. And I will say yes. Okay. There we go. It's a little hidden behind some of the mesh. If I wanted to make it bigger, I could turn up my total force vector. Let's say scale factor of five. There we go. Now it's now it's big. Um, again, you could hide elements from here if you wanted to. All right, so this makes a lot of sense. We're pulling on this lever arm. It's going into bending. That bending is resolved into shear across this cut plane here. So the biggest force component of these vectors here is this shear vector. So free body is really useful. Every model I work on is going to have free body somewhere to check my loads, check my constraints, you know, do some simple calcs. If you're working with a loads model and a stress model, you can, you know, generate your loads model, generate free body diagrams, transfer those over to your stress models later on. It's a really, really useful tool. Uh, okay, so I've got about 10 minutes left. Let me take a quick look at some of these questions here. Um, and then I'll kind of wrap up with my, uh, with my presentation and see, see what we have left. All right, so we've got audio. That's good. You guys can hear the train in the background. Can we add a new material to the FEMAP library? Yes, we can. I think I kind of showed that here. Um, model, material. Let's call this custom material. There 
There we go, 0.3. And I'm going to save this. OK. And next go around, say we're going to create a material. Let's load a material. Scroll down to the bottom of the list and look, there's my custom material. So you can create all the custom materials you want. Um, can we get the symposium presentations? Uh, yes, I think those are public domain. Um, I'll go ahead and, and look into it. It's probably something we can, uh, we can post on our website. There's not video recordings of the presentations, but there is uh, you know, the PowerPoint presentations, all their slides, which could be pretty useful. So I'll go ahead and look into that, and uh, if that's possible, um, then maybe we'll post them up online. And um, somebody mentioned the scale factor from your geometry. Um, there's all sorts of different options there for scale factor, and that's kind of the, a call you're going to have to make on your own, whether you're scaling into what unit system, what level of accuracy you need. Um, and Mike just chimed in, can you delete? Let's see, I think we can delete. Yeah, there's a delete button here. So let's see, we'll get rid of this. There we go. You could also go into this text file. These material libraries are all stashed in the FEMAP install. So if we came to, uh, let's see here, material library. Here we go. Here's the text format. So if you really want to dig in and modify things or change things, um, you can always track them down in here and uh, locate them. <clears throat> okay, so we're about out of time. Um, my presentation, my little PDF here, gives kind of an overview of a lot of these things. A lot of this information is pulled from the FEMAP help files. Um, I've been using FEMAP for almost six years. I still use the FEMAP help files. They're incredibly useful. Um, there's tons of information there. Uh, so here's a good overview, but always kind of reference the help files. And then you know, throughout this entire presentation, I kept saying, oh, we have more, we have more. So check out the Predictive Engineering website. If you come to the Resources tab, you'll see all of our old webinars are on here. We record them. This one up will probably be up uh, in a week, maybe two weeks. And we'll, I'll include this presentation and some example files. So if there's more topics that you want to do some self-training on, um, check out the website. It's going to be really useful here. Uh, fatigue Essentials, this is a new program we've been working on. If you're doing fatigue analysis, um, you can also find that here. We've got the web link within the document. And if you guys want to go in for some serious FEMAP and NX Nastran training, we offer classes, um, both for NX Nastran and for LS Dyna. So this is some tentative dates uh, when we're trying to set up our next, next classes. Um, it's a week-long, intensive, all day, um, but you have an opportunity to learn a ton. Uh, all right, so that pretty much wraps it up. Um, again, I'll follow up with more questions via email. Um, you guys have my contact info. Feel free to email me. And, um, yeah, we'll put this online as soon as we can. Thank you all for attending. All right, have a nice day.